It was originally coined uh, in the 1990s, yeah, 1990 yeah. by uh, a couple of psychologists, uh, Peter Salovey, who's now the dean, or who's now the president, I should say, of Yale, and mm. his colleague uh, Jack Mayer from New Hampshire. So, mm. um, you know, some people sort of say it's a bit of a fad, or it was a fad. Well, yeah. we're in our third decade uh, of emotional intelligence now, and I think, uh, like other great constructs in psychology, personality, intelligence, uh, motivation, mm. I think it's here to stay. I think one of the things that I saw was that it actually made the cover of Time magazine in 1996, but mm. what was the, I don't remember the headline, but what was the headline or the tagline? Mm. What's your EQ? It's not your IQ, it's not even a number, but emotional intelligence may redefine what it means to be smart. Mm. And uh, yeah, it made the cover of Time magazine. Uh, Daniel Goleman's book on yeah. the concept is now the most widely read social science book uh, in mm -hmm. the world, there has been an enormous uh, interest, I think, mm. in emotional uh, mm. intelligence. Let's get to the nuts and bolts of it. Mm. Uh, what is it? Well, it's really the ability to perceive and understand emotions, to effectively express and reason with them, and to effectively regulate and manage emotions. Mm -hmm. So that's really what it is. But to understand the power of it, I think you need to take a step back and understand uh, the science of emotions. Mm. So when you look into the science of emotions, we see that the way we feel influences three very important parts of ourself. Firstly, the way you feel influences your thoughts and the decisions that you make. Mm. Okay? You don't ask the boss for a pay rise or more resources if the boss is in a bad mood. <laughs> Everyone knows they're more likely to say no. Yeah. Of course, um, when emotions are consciously influencing our thoughts, uh, it's very obvious. You know, most of us can think about the best environment where we do our best thinking. But emotions powerfully influence the way we think very non-consciously and unconsciously mm. as well. And you've only got to look into the literature on things like unconscious bias mm. uh, to know that fact. For example, only 15% of the male population are over six foot tall, yet 60% of male CEOs are over six foot tall. Mm -hmm. what's going on there. Mm. Um, the way we feel doesn't just influence the way we think and the decisions that we make. The way we feel influences our behaviour. Where do our emotions show up in our tone of voice, in our facial expressions, in our body language? And because of this fact, they're fundamental to how we collaborate, communicate, connect, build rapport and interact uh, inside and outside of the workplace. And finally, one of the most robust well-established findings in the social sciences is the direct link between the way people feel and the way people perform at work. So the third thing that emotions influence is the way we perform. Right. Think about it for yourself. Yeah. You know, where do you do your best performing at work? Probably when you feel relaxed, yeah. comfortable, when you feel consulted, when you feel informed, when you feel like you're doing meaningful work. And most people, on average, perform their worst at work when they feel overly worried, stressed, tired, anxious, concerned, mm. and so on. And I think one of the reasons why emotional intelligence is so popular, both from the public and the corporate sector, is the corporate sector is obviously interested in productivity and performance. Mm. And I think this is still, even today, one of the most overlooked, yet one of the most valuable things businesses can do mm to build productivity and performance because the world of work that we live in today is one that's often described as do more with less, where financial pressures abound, yeah. where uncertainty is always around the corner, mm. uh, where the amount of information that we receive in a day is enormous and where workplaces are more uh, culturally and in other ways diverse. And so um, the complexity, if you like, of the workplace is greater than it's ever been and that complexity can uh, have a negative impact, if you like, mm. uh, because it creates negative emotions or can, and negative emotions can deteriorate performance, deteriorate thinking and deteriorate behaviour. So it's a very yeah. popular construct again, post the global financial crisis. You see, because what I, what I hear there is that what you just said is that, for example, if, if I'm very relaxed, mm. you're saying that the way I feel will either enhance or destroy my performance. Yes. That's right. It's a thing called the broaden and build uh, hypothesis, some mm. work that was very famously done by Barbara Fredrickson. She's shown that when people experience 
a positive feeling, it has this broaden and build effect on the way we think and the way we behave. Um, that is to say, when we experience positive feelings, we know, because you can see it in the neuroscience, mm. that we mm. are firstly dopamine releases, which is important for interest and learning. We think more laterally, we think more creatively. Then behaviourally, you know, we show more interest, we pay more attention, we ask more questions. We're more engaged, if you like, mm. in the workplace. Conversely, when you experience a negative emotion, negative emotions narrow our thinking, limit our interpretation of events, they cause focus, mm. which can be good in some situations, but in most situations it's not good. And so um, negative emotions have this narrowing and limiting uh, effect.